tonight on LA Kings Magazine, we'll be hanging out with Marty McSorley, the man who wrote the book on NHL enforcement. And we'll shed some light on the fans at the end of the tunnel. And join us in the quest to find the succulent Baron O'Beef. Hi, and welcome to LA Kings Magazine. Today I'm hanging out with Marty McSorley down in Manhattan Beach. And we're going to do a little one-on-one -on -one interview in a little bit. But right now, Marty, you know right when you come in out of the locker room? Yeah. You've got a whole herd of fans there waiting for you. Maybe. <laughs> That must give you a little charge right when you're coming on the ice. That's great. You know, you want to acknowledge them and go over, and but you can't because you're so focused for the game. <laughs> Just give them a wink. Let's take a look at some of them. At every Kings home game, diehard fans gather in the tunnel to greet their team and give them an extra shot of momentum to help start things off right. We're down in the bowels of the farm, actually. And I got a major McSorley fan here. What's your name, buddy? Greg. Reed. Greg? All right, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Check it out. Check this out. Mr. McSorley. You're about Marty's size. Is that what gets you to be a big fan of his? Uh, yeah, the physical play. I like the fact that he, uh, he's there when you need him. Kelly Oak, oh, dig it out. McSorley shoots and scores. I like to see Marty get into it every once in a while, but now he hasn't been fighting. Lately. I think he's a little itchy to mix it up a little bit, but like you said, he can't really do it. They're a little short on defense. Right? I got a bona fide Byron Defoe fan right here. Byron gave him the stick tonight. I wanted to meet Byron Defoe ever since he got to L.A. Um, I just met somebody in the forum, told me to go wait outside in the parking lot. Went to go wait, met him. Great guy, great guy. How come you're such a big Byron um, fan? I don't know. It's, I mean, how can you not be? Two games, 107 shots stopped. What's the nickname you have for him? Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. He's Bad. playing well. All right, who's your favorite team? Jamie Stewart. Yeah, what is that? Because he's an awesome goaltender. How about Byron DeBoe, Lord Byron? Oh, um, King Jamie, but Byron's pretty good. He's got a great future with the Kings. Hey. Um, I hope to see him playing a lot. I think I've got a pretty serious Tony Granato fan. Absolutely, David. David? Yes, sir. I see you've got just about everybody's autograph on there. Uh-huh. But Tony is our number one guy. Tony's the number one guy. Tony's what is about you related to him or anything? No. He's just a super player, aggressive, goes after it, and uh, just a hot and soul, hot and soul little team. There's pocket over to Granado. He one times it. That is outstanding. He's a tough guy. He's pretty feist. Are you a feisty guy? No, I'm just a nice guy. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with the Kings captain, Wayne Gretzky. He's going to give us a little interview before the game tonight. Wayne, are you ready to go? Oh, yeah. Well, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I, that's in a way, Jersey. That should have been the tip off. I think it, uh, Gretz is your fan. Right? Yeah, I mean, you're, my fan you're, tell me. you're Gretz's number one fan, is yeah. that it? What's your name? Warren. Warren? You got uh, the Gretz jersey, you got the 802. What other memorabilia we got? <laughs> Simon Gretz. All right, are you at every home game? When I can get her, yes. My dad's taking tickets and we roll for about a lot of years. Went to Montreal Stanley Cup at the highlight of my uh, life in the King Kings of the Cup. Hopefully this year that we get there again. The highlight of my uh, life in the highlight of my uh, life in the highlight of my uh, life in the Your Gretz is number one fan, is yes. that it? I got a youthful yeah. maniac fan here. I got a Mr. Eric McCoy. You a major Eric fan? Always. It's the day he came here. Number one. What is it about him that you like? What's the style of his play? Color of his hair? What? He checks hard. He's a goal scorer. He tries hard every night. If you're winning or losing, he's always there to hit someone. He skates hard throughout the whole game. It doesn't change. That's like a LaCroix testimonial. Now, where'd you get all... Are these real autographs from everyone? Or? Yep, everybody. Do you carry a pen with you all the time? Right here in my pocket. <laughs> Next time you've got the right ticket, check out the tunnel and let the guys hear it when they hit the ice.
So I saw some cheap action from the Detroit Red Wings down here. Were you going to stick up for your team? Go, let's go. <laughs> you got Kingston once? Yeah, he was fighting. Did he go down? No, he tried taking my shoe off, but I beat him up. He bit your leg, though? No. I got a lawyer, actually. I got a lawyer to give me a card. So well, that's perfect. I think I'm, in, I'm suing him. All right, well, it's time to go back. You guys won't even fight. Do you ever get to go eat concessions when you're around the league and you're maybe not suited up for a game? Just when I'm sitting in the penalty box, anything that they throw at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, today on the show, we're going to go to stop. We're going to stop at every concessionaire at the farm, and we're going to find out which is the best stuff. Now, you got to take my word for it, what I think is the best, but I think I know what is the best. After spending a few hours doing some serious investigative reporting, a guy can work up a pretty hefty appetite. Hi, ladies. I need some food, please. I need one, two, three. I need three dogs. Three dogs, a peanut, two, two Cokes, a Diet Coke, and make it three Cokes. One to one of everything? Yeah, well, yeah, well that's tough. Uh, my budget isn't what it used to be. Yeah, three Cokes, one Diet, please. What else? What else is good? Candy bar, anybody? Uh, oh, uh, some potato chips, please. That would be ideal. Yeah, and we got peanuts. Oh, that's good. That's good. No nachos? No. Oh, nachos here? Okay, everything, all my goodies are over there? All right. Thank you very much. Okay, as long as I don't fall, I'll be fine. Look out. Though standard issue, these vittles seem great at the moment. Let's see where my special box is. The guys on the team said they'd set me up with a special security guard and everything near the enemy locker room. I think they want me to spy. I've got one of the guards that keeps everybody out of here. That's where the Disney team's hanging tonight. Hang on. Excuse me, buddy. All right. Can I talk to you for a second? I want to talk to you. <laughs> How do you keep everybody out of here? Oh, it's hard work, man. Be strict with them. Yeah? Yeah. To say, beat it, loser? Yeah, in so many words. <laughs> Expletive. So are you a big Kings fan? Well, I'm a more of a basketball fan. I'm starting to like the Kings now. Yeah. Like the physical part of the game. So who's your favorite Kings player? Uh, Pat Connacher. Pat Connacher. Hack. Small and feisty. Yeah, he's tough. So how long have you been doing this, keeping the guys out of the visitors Probably area? Two years. Yeah, do you do it for basketball also? Yeah, basketball also. And what's your name? John. John? Mm -hmm. All right, John, thanks. So we can get through anywhere, though, right? Oh, yeah. We can go oh, anywhere yeah. we want. VIP treatment. Only. Very good. Thank you very yeah, much. Right. I like to hear that. VIP, man. That's the only way to go. Uh, uh, yeah, this is it. All right. Oh, these, these are nice. You can't see the action when they go to the other end, but when they're right here, this, these are good. Especially if people drop stuff. If somebody drops something, I'll get some concessions. While my vision was obstructed, my appetite definitely was not. Ooh, what's that? Nachos to go? I want the deluxe one, Art. Give me the best shot you got. Oh, my. That looks pretty good. I had a dog a little bit ago, a hot dog, and I don't really think that was... Uh, really quite what the doctor ordered. Gosh, <laughs> you did. Did you get that in slow motion? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Want some mustard on there? Just shake the camera. <laughs> OK. I guess that's it. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Oh, yeah. You got to smash it, man. You got to smash it just right. All right. See how Art did here. Looks pretty good. This is a great place. You can come in here, get a great sandwich, and watch your game. And hopefully they've got toothpicks to dig some of this out of my face. Every day, the Kings receive lots of mail, where fans ask specific questions of their favorite players. Kelly, this question is from Jeffrey Grinbaum, 10 years old from Calabasas. What does three to five hole mean? 
Well, Jeffrey, that's a, a term that's used commonly when I play goal because often they score on me and that's right through the legs and that is called in hockey the five hole. If you have a question you want to ask a king, send it on a postcard to Ask the King, 638 Lindero Canyon Road, number 350, Oak Park, California, 91301. Martino, you've participated in the NHL Super Skills Competition. What's your specialty? Uh, scoring goals, obviously. <laughs> you know, these, soft, these soft hands here. Actually, I like shooting at the target. I hear you're a bad plate breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, champ, five shots, four targets. I just, uh, and uh, the breakaways, the, you know, I can score in the breakaways. The tough thing is when I get in the game, to get there, to <laughs> get in that position of a breakaway. Okay, well, we've got some kings participating in this one. Let's take a look at that. All right, we're here today at the Forum for the NHL Super Skills Competition. Today we're going to find out who's got the hardest shot, who's the fastest skater, the most agile, and who's the baddest goalie. Check it out. Right now we got the fastest skater competition going on. Who's the fastest skater on this team? I think Tony Granado got it today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, a little bit smaller, a little quicker than the bigger guys going around the, the ice. But uh, you know, I have my money on Tony. He came through for me. All right. Was that a big win for you? That was a big win. That was a big oh. win. Rob, who's got the hardest shot on this team? Well, I think uh, Eric McGuire had it at about 93 miles an hour, which is. Uh, you know, pretty good, but uh, I think the size of him and the, you know the way he skates uh, that helps out a lot. How's that going to rate around the league? Is that going to be good? Is that a big time deal? I think it's good. Uh, probably won't be the best. Uh, I think uh, the record's 105, so uh, the high 90s are, are probably what will so get the guys to the All-Star game. Okay, they also had an agility contest today. How does what does that prove? Well, it, it shows the guys that should be scoring goals and the guys that shouldn't be, <laughs> the guys that are skating around deking everybody out. Uh, you know, it, it's it's fun. Uh, it's good for the fans to see. You know, the guys come out and show their skills uh, in a different situation other than a game. Yeah, this was a nice deal. I mean, they got a good turnout. The crowd is into it. I think we just saw Marty go off. Marty's throwing pucks. They love Marty when he's Marty, giving he stuff still, up. Yeah, yeah. He, he puts on a show for everyone. They also had goaltending competition too. So the guys stop shots, they get like 10 shots. Uh, you know, I think when you get the goalies out here on breakaways, it's, it's what the fans want to see. They want to see a one-on-one -on -one confrontation and, uh, you know, it's great to see a guy come down and put a top shelf the next time the goalie makes a save. It's pretty fun. Kelly looks in great shape. It looks like he's been out there all season. Yeah, he's, he's battled back. Uh, he's been on the bike a lot lately. He's been a lot of therapy. and uh, You know, the injury cut him out a lot longer than he had hoped so. And uh, obviously, he's ready to come back and be excited for him. Great. like the Kings do at Cellular Mobile Phone Company, the number one agent for AirTouch Cellular in the San Fernando Valley. Call 1-800-300-CMPC.
the NHL has become pretty specialized. You've got offensive players, you've got penalty killers, you've got enforcers, and you've got goaltenders. Not often can you get all that in one package. Los Angeles Kings have got it, and Marty McSorley. Started out, I think, basically as an enforcer, and now you've turned your game around, Marty. How was it that you were able to evolve your game from, I think, strictly being an enforcer early to now you're in on everything? Well, I think when anybody comes in the league, they have dreams of themselves of becoming a goal scorer. And uh, I, I got into Pittsburgh, and I knew to make the hockey team, I had to fight. Uh, it wasn't a very talented hockey team. But uh, two years into my career, I got a tremendous break, and I was getting traded to Edmonton. Uh, I was very afraid at the time that I'd never make the hockey team. I mean, uh, you, know, you go in there, the team had won two Stanley Cups, and one of the, uh, the, the likes of Wayne Gretzky and Mark Messier and Paul Coffey and Grant Fier, and a list of guys that had all played in the Canada Cup. And uh, you know, once I made the hockey team, it was such a perfect environment to, to, to watch and to grow every day and to be a young guy and to love the oh, hockey, man. love the game. Yeah. I mean, and, and there we were in games where sometimes the score was pretty lopsided. So I had the opportunity to play. That was one of the biggest trades in the history of sports, certainly in the history of hockey. You know, a blockbuster deal, Santa Gretz down here and with you and Mike Krushelniski, right? Yeah. Okay. And, I mean, the changes in hockey since then, particularly, let's say, salary-wise, and maybe this whole southern swing of teams, I mean, I think things changed quite a bit. Do you think that had a lot to do with Gretz coming here well, originally? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, teams like Edmonton yeah. were the ones that uh, spurred the growth of salaries. You know, when they, they, you know, there's complaints now about salaries and are they getting ready to keep their teams. But Edmonton trading all those players and selling them off, making it a real business. A lot of those players would have played there for a lot less to stay together. Uh, when they started to sell those players off and trade them with, with a great deal of money changing hands at the same time, the players stepped back and said, listen, you know, why is the owners the guys that are making all the money here? I'm the one that's playing. I'm the guy that's being sold here. Uh, it's about time that the players start making some money, and it really spurred the growth of salaries. Once Wayne started making good money in, in, in Los Angeles, comparable to what some of the top NBA players were making, Mario Lemieux followed. Then Mark, when he got traded, it, uh, Mark Messier to, to New York, it followed, and it escalated and brought everybody up. Well, it seems as though you've acclimated yourself pretty nicely in <laughs> Southern California. Uh, I think I'm lifestyle. doing okay. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Living down here by the beach. Now, that little interlude that you spent in Pittsburgh, you really don't get the same beach quality in Pittsburgh, did you? I don't know if I handled that as well as I should have. I, I went in there to a talented hockey team. The environment there isn't, uh, uh, you know, I think Rick Talk and other guys who have left there are going to say the same thing. The environment wasn't very conducive at the time to, to guys growing to a really high competitive spirit. I need that. I'm not the most talented guy in the world. I need an environment where everybody's competitive, everybody's going to work hard, we're going to grind some wins out, and we're going to win as many games as we can, and before you know it, you're in the playoffs and, you, and things start happening. That wasn't going on in Pittsburgh. I was, uh, I was disappointed leaving here. It really hurt me. It yeah. hurt me because we went to the Stanley Cup Finals. We had a team that maybe people say shouldn't have been there, and we worked tremendously hard. We were close to a bunch of guys. It's nice now you're under new steady ownership. Yeah. That's got to be a good feeling. Things have been a little tumultuous as far as management and ownership goes the last couple of years. It's got to be a pretty good feeling now. Well, uh, the last couple, last three, four years, three years, you know, is the year we went to the finals, they traded Paul Coffey, there was different things going on. Players like Patty Conacher and Kelly Rudy and Wayne Gretzky and Yari Curry, Tony Granato, those guys have been through an awful lot. I, I have a great deal of, of admiration for them because not only were they great players when we're winning, but they were great players when we, we weren't winning and things were really, really bad. Yeah, that's got to be tough. You know, I, yeah, it, you, you go through it and now that's what makes it so special right now. You want to win, you know. You know after going through those times, and the fans have stuck with us. The fans have been great. And hockey in LA has continued to grow with, with how we stuttered there. Oh, yeah. And uh, let, let's go out and win right now. Let's, you know, I mean, our, our, our ownership is, is great right now. Everything is stable. The players are there. The players are hungry. The players are, we're going to do whatever we can for the young guys. It's a good feeling in the dressing room. 